your courses and and it just is fascinating. It's, it's good foundation. So thank you so much to be here. So are you ready? Three, two, one, go! <laughs> well, good day. Good day, a little longer, but good. And it's still halfway, but I know that's what it's called a marathon. Otherwise, it was just a, like a, when I ride motorcycles, so I'm a, just a, a weekend rider, not a big, big uh, rider, but the same in here. We love it, this, and this is amazing. So please, all time is yours. Okay, we've got a short bit of time, and um, we've heard a lot of people talking about a lot of good topics, and therefore I'm just going to, in a short period of time, focus on really what we do that's different that nobody else really does. And I know since it's rushed, just let everybody know, we do have our full system, or well, at least the, the main parts of it online now, and we will actually be over there in Europe in Belgium in September. Rare that we're live, and this will be a live one. But um, coming down to it is really what makes what we're doing different than a lot of the speakers that we've heard and seen. And that's what we want to focus on a little bit. One of the things that if we had to pick it down to one thing that we do that really nobody else is even looking at is the skull. As we said in the previous lecture, the skull before is we're working with multidisciplinary as anybody who's doing quality work is these days, as you can tell but we don't stop at just the neck. We heard talking about trying to get the, the atlas, occipital, atlanto joints balanced. Challenge is if you're balancing the atlas to a crooked occiput, what are you doing? You know, what, what's your reference point? You're assuming that that C1, C2 junction with the occiput is what we wanna do. What if your reference point of the occiput is, is off? What if the whole shape of the skull is off? What are we doing? We're trying to balance T-scan. Well, what if the maxilla is often plain to the mandible? You're always going to have a low dragging interference on that low maxilla side. You're going to consistently have a working interference. What are you going to do? Grind it all down? This isn't a enamel issue. This is actually the shape of the skull that's causing the problem. One of the things we're trying to do is as we get the forces of occlusion into the skull, we want a balanced force. We want a balanced force dissipated through a balanced skull. If our plane of occlusion, especially that maxillary plane, is off and we have forces of occlusion going into it, we're going to dissipate those forces unbalanced through the skull. If we can take a skull that's distorted, people that aren't happy, that have distorted faces. You can see a round eye, you can see the narrow eye, you can see the whole system off even when you level the face out. We get that imbalanced vectors of forces. This is what sets up a lot of the head pain, TMD pain, occlusal wear, tear, all these issues people have been talking about. But what if we could very simply change this? What if we could take a very unhappy person migraines, geez, she had migraines once a week, at least, she missed at least two, three days of work a week. If we could take that system and we could make changes. Now we don't always make them perfect, but we can get that system balanced pretty darn quickly with a beautiful smile at the same time. That's the goal is to take a unhappy, distorted face and turn it into a happy, pretty face. That's more than just teeth. That's working with that whole cranial system, getting that T-line balanced, getting the nose balanced, getting the face balanced, the ears, the jaws, the paths of occlusion, and then we can worry about a lot of these other occlusal issues that we talked about. Ooh, we go backwards quickly. See what happens in Mexico? <laughs> what we're trying to do is create neurological balance. In the end, we want to finish with aesthetic beauty. That's what we've said the whole time. We have some cases, I remember this, poor, all these cases, as you know, are done by Kay MacArthur, my partner, and um, did beautiful aesthetic work, and then she learned and taught a lot of the how to make it functional. Now, if we look at Carolyn, this is post-orthodontic, if you can believe that. They actually did four bicuspid extractions on a class three skeletal case, left her with a crossbite and said, this is all we can do. 
To me, that's just crazy. But if we break it down to just the maxilla and the face, there was a huge maxillary roll or cant. When we looked at it actually on a cranial face bow, this is where her maxilla was in line with the posterior cranial system. That's not where we want to do it, right? Now, if we had to try to treat this dentally, that'd be some long teeth. If we had to try to treat that surgically, that's a lot of trauma. What if we could simply take this case and drop that maxilla? In a, as an early case, this took a couple months. In the end, you can do it in a couple weeks. But that's not micromotion, is it? That's quite a degree of movement. On the side that was high, how high would you say that is? Seven, eight more millimeters, 10. And if you could take that to that, is that no. microcranial movement? No, that's no. huge movement. And that's relative to the joints. So this isn't mandibular seating in any way because the mandible is not involved in this registration. That's a large change. If we look at some faces that are set up, <laughs> not balanced and not happy, <clears throat> sometimes we see them going opposite ways. Wow. We can see changes that are happening in what we call a, a fan face. <laughs> Everything's converging on one side. Do you think that's going to be a happy joint on that side or oh, teeth no. on the other? Is it going to be easy to try to get disclusion timing reduction if we're getting lateral movements on a maxilla that's that far dropped? It's going to be a little tough. I mean, you are going to hit this canine first. You're going to have balance. When you go to this side, you're going to have no canine. You're going to be working on whatever you can. It doesn't work that easily. Now, if we mount that on a level plane relative to it, this is the kind of angle that we see. Some of this is dental drop. Some of this is cranial high. This is why we have it going opposite directions. But that's nowhere near what we want for a balanced finish. Now, if we can take that, at least balance the occlusion to the maxilla, because she had a lot of trauma, you can't get everything as balanced, but you can get a working function in those systems compared to when they start out. So in the end, we always have to ask, on top of all these other questions, which are valid, do they have cranial distortions? Because this is a component that's usually ignored. People just aren't, they see it, but their explanations don't make sense. Condylar seating, these things. Ugh. But when we look at the skull, as we talked about before, this whole lateral aspect, all of these squamal junctions move a lot. And we can move this entire upper jaw relative to the lower jaw through these junctions in here. Now these junctions back here don't move that much. These sutures in the back don't move that much. These have a different type, but all of these squamal movements move a lot. And that's why if we separate the posterior aspect from the entire anterior aspect, we see two areas that we're really trying to get balanced. Remember that this posterior part with the TMJ has to meet this anterior part. And that's why I look at the occlusion as another suture, which dentally we work with this suture all the time. This junction in here between the sphenoid and the frontal, this is where our pituitary gland is. We want this system to be balanced with this system. And remember, anytime we're talking about doing bite registrations, doing jaw tracking, these things, what we're doing is looking at what's going on in this posterior section. The joint is in this posterior section. So when we're working with the bite and bite registrations in TMJ, we're getting this system aligned. But then we forget about what's in front of it, what it has to meet. How is this going to meet the maxilla? 
That's why most of the time we're working on <coughs> TMJ bite registrations, they never align up with the maxilla. How can they line up with the maxilla? If the posterior section isn't in line with that anterior section, you're gonna have occlusal dysfunction and you're gonna have TMD issues. Now there are surgical ways we can try to move one over or move one up, but usually we don't see that's necessary. What we wanna do is balance the back with the front, stick it together, and then do the teeth. Now we have some cranial distortions that are definitely traumas. They're more difficult to work with, but they definitely affect the cranial mandibular system. One of these that we see in regard to TMJ, TMD issues, normally we have a nice skull, as we said, the mandible meets the maxilla, the joints, the joints to the mandibular occlusion is on line. Sometimes we get a hit from the front or from the back, but the result is more of what we call a lateral strain pattern. Now in these patterns, the mandible is gonna be over here and the maxilla is over here. So we have a side shift of those two systems. Our mandible is always gonna be over here. Now, if we're closing, the mandible's closing, as soon as it gets close to within 20 millimeters, it's gonna seek the occlusion, which means it's gonna shift over to the lateral side, it's gonna gap this lateral pull, and this is how we get that anterior medial displacement of a disc. It's not backwards, it's always a lateral shift on closure that precedes the joint internal derangement dysfunction. This is where we see the condyle going lateral and the disc going anterior medial. I've never seen a TMD, TMD case that didn't have this pattern and this dysfunction. We see it on skulls where the back of the occiput shifted off the one side compared to the front. You see it on patients. The mandible's over here and the maxilla is over here. You see it in the nostrils. You see it when they open and close and they have to shift their mandible back to fit it. This is where we start seeing problems. You can see these patterns. We saw a couple of cases today already where they're looking at jaw motion analysis or whatever we want to call it. We see cases open, shift to the side, close, shift back to the middle. We always see this open, slide, close, slide. That's because this part of the closure is driven by the fossa and this is seeking maxilla. When they seek the maxilla, this pull lateralizes, and this is where we see the primary TMD dysfunction every time. We see them open, go over, close, go over. They're actually drawing the shape of the skull for you. The first part of opening is from the occlusion. Then usually this is where we have a reduction event, and then they seat, and down here, is the midpoint between the fossa and the back of the head. They close halfway based on the back of the head and then they find occlusion. It's a recurring pattern you see. So we have the occlusal driven path and the fossa driven path. These should be the same path. That is our goal. But if we do a fossa driven path for TMJ for a splint, we notice that that mandible is set off from the maxilla. That's normal for phase one treatment. But why don't we just make the shift, bend the door frame back to normal, put this fossa center back on center, and then our paths are the same. That is what we do. We want the posterior section in line with the anterior section, because if they're not, we're gonna have dysfunction. If you do a velocity trace, we see the same thing, fast, slow fast, slow, fast, slow. They're drawing the shape of the skull for you. This is what you find in these cases. So if it's this lateral shift that's actually causing skull problems and causing posterior cross bites and causing these distortions, we need to fix it. I mean, we can try to arrange the occlusion around it in some cases, but 
wouldn't it be a lot better if we could to fix it? Or the problems are going to come back and the finishes are going to be unstable. It's just, you see it so often. It'd be nice if we could just change the shape of the skull, put the path of function back on center, have it meet a balanced maxilla with a center line mandible with the path coming in perpendicular to the planes and the force being dissipated. That's a perfect world. Our goal is how much can we get it? But if you can take a case like that, not online, mandibles over here, maxilla is over here, large roll, but we notice that a lot of the teeth are kind of following this line. This is post ortho even, right? We don't see long teeth, short teeth. We don't see gaps. We don't see extrusion. So we know we're not dealing with alveolar all the way. If we could take that and drop that, that changes everything. That changes everything. Now we can take this case and do a proper finish, be it orthodontic, if we want to open the spaces, if we want to do it restoratively, any way you want to do it. But that first step, in my opinion, is what's the most important and the most ignored. And that's why when we're looking at a lot of cases like this, what we're trying to do is number one, diagnose what we're looking at. Do we have these TMJ internal derangements? Because yeah, that's gonna be fixed first. We're not trying to do everything at once. Do we have occlusal distortions? How much of this is tooth height? How much is alveolar? How much is it from an unopposed extraction site where we're dropping down? But also how much of that is cranial versus dental? What can we do in minutes? What can we do in months? What are we going to do with the skull? What are we going to do with porcelain? We can see where the mandible wants to go now because that'll tell you a lot of what's going on in the skull and does it match what we're looking at? I mean, do, do our eyes match our records? When we talk about functional theater is that we saw that Carolyn in that case had, you know, seven, eight, nine millimeters of distortion. Do we have the room to fix that? Can we open the posterior vertical that much? Can we alter tooth heights? How are we going to get these done? In that fan face case, it didn't have a lot of theater, so you can't get full correction. Hey, it's been going on since they're young. Bones have grown. But how much can we do? Can we do it within the functional theater or not? A lot of this depends upon how you take your bite registration. And then what's the treatment plan? But when it comes down to actually treating it, we always do TMJ as a separate issue. We treat a joint like a joint. Once the joint is healthy, we don't want to bring it into its existing occlusion until we have a joint healthy. Then we can say, okay, and even in a lot of cases, let's just temporarily remove, just open up that suture basically, so that we can see where the system wants to be. We can look at where the mandible wants to be. We can balance the cranial components within that theater. Now, once we have the maxilla as level as possible, the mandible where it wants to be, now we have a look at what we want to do dentally. Now we can see, okay, what are our limits from a dental? We can do some of it orthodontically. We can do some of it orthopedically. We can do a heck of a lot of it restoratively if you do clever preps. Now, Javier, you know how to do clever prepping, good wax bites, good wax ups. Kay does amazingly clever preps to make a lot of these changes work. And then we can finalize the static occlusion. We can finalize the dynamic occlusion. This is when you can go into your jaw tracking. This is when you can go into your T-scans. You know, we can do all this stuff at the end. But in the beginning, first thing we want to do is stabilize the joint and establish a step one mandibular position. Mistake a lot of people make is they think that that TMJ bite is their finished bite. It's not. It's a stabilize the joint bite then we can look at what's going on with temporarily even leveling that maxillary plane. In some cases, we actually bring one side down and one side up temporarily to let the head come back on, to let the occiput cervical spine and the rest of the posture come back online. 
That's not finished. That's a temporary step. Phase two, we tend to call this joints, jaws, teeth. Our step two is leveling the eyes cranially. And then we look at the arch positions. Dentally, this is orthopedics, cranial orthopedics. Then we can look at tooth positions, tooth forms, tooth shapes, and finalize occlusion. So what step are they in? We don't finalize the occlusion and then go back and try to deal with PMJ. It doesn't work that way. That's why what we're trying to do is do orthocranial occlusion. We're looking at the muscular system. We're looking at muscle lengths, joint positions, jaws, shapes, position. We look at our aesthetic curves, however we wish to define them. We look at our arch forms from front to back. We're looking at our overbite, over jet relationships, depending upon what philosophy we're following. But we're not treating them where they are. The main thing is that the strategy we're gonna use depends upon what's going on in the skull or what are the triplanar cranial patterns. And functional theater, how much room do we have to work? We can make a lot of corrections if we have the room to do it. As we said before, we are gonna do this live in Belgium and it is online, <laughs> which is the, the main goal of what we're trying to do. But from everything that we've seen in the past couple weeks and all the lectures we've heard today, we see a lot about finishing. We see a lot about teamwork. We see a lot about posture. We see a lot about orthopedics, all good stuff. It's exactly right. What is no one talking about? The fact that we're basing this and thinking that this is a fixed reference point. It's not. This is also moving, and it needs to be put into the equation, not just balanced to it. We want to make it balanced first, then we have a reference point from which we can work. That's the one thing that I think that we can offer a lot of these people that no one, I've heard yet, no one even talk about really. And so hopefully, um, if you add that, to the treatment plans that we're hearing here, it's gonna make a lot of differences. And we do this without surgery, which makes a big difference to the patient. And hopefully that helps. So probably, depending upon how your time schedule is going, we're about done unless there's questions. <laughs> oh my God, you're such a cooperative physician. <laughs> that helps, give us eight minutes in advance. Uh, I, you're keeping the, the good for yourself. Well, I'm kidding. Honestly, this is fascinating. Honestly, I want the people to invite. It is one thing to see it this way, but it's another thing to to see the handsome part. And then it's and like I have it on in my own face, and uh, it feels I, weird when you bite down. Honestly, I think definitely it's something that uh, you really have to get over thinking because you're right that I've always considered these pretty much fixed. And um, we do see those uh, 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 imbalances, but uh, we really need to learn and, and uh, be able to diagnose and separate the dental from cranial, as you were saying. And that's, that's the part that we really lack. So it's uh, definitely something that needs to be addressed and learned. But we have a few minutes. Can, it's yeah. something that can be put into anybody's diagnostic protocol that I've heard this whole day and week is because it's just a simple step at the beginning and just some minor alterations in what you're trying to do. It's not a massive shift from all of the, anybody that's doing multidisciplinary care, but this is even stuff that can be done purely as a dentist working with other people because you see it right there. You can make the changes right there. It's going to influence what you do for the rest of that treatment plan, if you know this at the beginning, it's gonna change your treatment plan. It's not a and massive shift from all of the, anybody that's doing multidisciplinary care, but this is even stuff that can be done. I think, oh, yeah, here oh, we go. That's good, yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. so- Thank you so much, Dr. Walker. Beautiful.